So good afternoon. We are starting a new uh, group, a new class for uh, the mediumship uh, literature group. We are reading the gospel according with Spiritism. Everybody's welcome to join us. Uh, if you want to join our uh, group live, uh, you can contact me through my Facebook page, Revenant, or my website, revenant.world. And uh, it's free. Um, and <coughs> Everybody is welcome to join. Uh, today we are going to continue on chapter 27 from the Gospel According with Spiritism by Alan Kardec. Let's do our initial prayer and, and we are going to start to reading. Dear God, thanks, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here together, uh, reading. Uh, reading from the gospel according with spiritism and uh, learning important lessons from you uh, from spirits uh, about the gospel of jesus uh, the things that he taught us and now that we are able to understand in a deeper level uh, and uh, thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to uh, use those wisdoms to grow spiritually and to get closer to you. Please help us to understand the things we need to learn and apply in our, in our daily lives. Thank you for your unconditional love. Amen. All right. I guess Catherine had problems with her connection. And she's joining back. So who would like to start reading? David, Darcy, or Francis? I can. <laughs> so we are okay. going to start on intelligible prayer. Oh, shoot. OK. Um, 16. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be barbarian, barbarian unto me. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Else when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room be unlearn, unlearned say, Amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. Oh, kind of like me. For thon verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. 1 Corinthians 14, 11, 14, 16, and 17. Number 17. The value of prayer comes from the thought to which it is united. So it is impossible to join any thought to something that is not understood, since when what is not understood cannot touch the heart. For the great majority of human beings, prayers that are said in an unknown language are nothing more than a conglomeration of words, of words which say nothing to the spirit. In order for prayer to touch one, it is necessary for each word to awaken an idea, and when the words are not comprehended, if they are unable to do this. It would be merely a simple formula whose virtue depended on the greater or lesser number of times it was repeated. Many pray from duty, others from obedience to habit. This is why they judge themselves to be exonerated from their duty after having prayed a determined prayer a sufficient number of times in a certain order. God reads what passes deep in our hearts. He scrutinizes our thoughts and our sincerity and therefore in judging him to be more sensitive to the format rather than depth is to discredit him see chapter 8 item 2 prayers for suffering and the dead 18 suffering spirits ask for prayers and these are useful to them because on recognizing that someone thinks of them they feel comforted and less unhappy However, prayer has a more direct action on them by reanimating them and instilling in them a desire to elevate themselves through repentance by making amends and can turn them away from bad thoughts. 
It is in this sense that prayers can not only alleviate, but can also shorten their suffering. See heaven and hell, second part, examples. 19. There are some people who do not accept the offering of prayers for the dead, as according to their belief, the soul has only two alternatives to be saved or to be eternally condemned to suffering, which would result in prayer being useless in either case. Without discussing the merits of this belief, let us admit for a moment the reality of eternal unpardonable penitence, which our prayers are impotent to interrupt. We ask if, even in this hypothesis, it would be logical, charitable, or even Christian to refuse prayer to, for the re reprobate. However, impotent these might be in liberating them, would these prayers not be a demonstration of pity capable of softening their suffering? On earth, when a man is condemned to perpetual prison, even if there was not a minimum chance of obtaining a pardon, it is for business. Is it forbidden for a charitable person to help alleviate the weight of the sentence? When someone is attacked by an incurable disease, there being no hope of cure, should we abandon the person without offering some kind of relief? Remind yourselves that amongst the wicked, you may find someone who has been dear to you, perhaps a friend, father, or mother, a son or daughter, and ask yourself if, because of your belief that there was no possibility of a pardon, you would refuse a glass of water to mitigate their thirst or a balsam which would heal their wounds? Would you not do so for them what you would do for one condemned to the galleys? Would you not give them proof of your love and console them? No, this idea would not be Christian. A belief which hardens the heart cannot be allied to one of a God who puts the daily of loving one's neighbor in first place. The non-existence of eternal punishment does not imply a denial of temporary penalty, given that it is possible for God and his justice to confound good with evil. In this case, to deny the efficiency of prayer would be to deny the efficiency, efficacy of consolation, encouragement, and good advice. These would be equal to denying the strength we absorb from the moral assistance received from those who wish us well. 20. Others base their ideas on a more specific reason, that of the immutability of divine decree. God, they say, cannot modify his decisions just when asked by one of his creatures, because if this were so, then nothing on earth would have stability. Therefore, man has nothing to ask of God. It only rests for him to submit and adore him. In this idea there is a false interpretation of the principle of the immutability of divine law or better still an ignorance of this law with regard to future penalties this law is revealed by the spirits of the lord at this time now that man is sufficiently mature to understand what within faith conforms to or is contrary to the divine attributes According to the doctrine of the absolute eternity of all punishment, the remorse and repentance of the culprit are not taken into account. All desire to better himself is useless, for he is condemned to remain eternally evil. However, if he were condemned for a determined period of time, then the punishment would cease when that time had expired. But who can say that by then he will have improved his sentiments? Who can say, as shown by man, as shown by many, who have been condemned on earth that on leaving prison he will not be just as bad as before in the first case it would be keeping a man under the pain of punishment after he had become good in the second it would be granting of amnesty to one who continues to be guilty god's law is much more is more provident than that being always just impartial and merciful it places no fixed duration for punishment, whatever the case may be. This law can be resumed in the following manner. 21. Man always suffers the consequences of his errors. There is no infraction of God's law which does not have its punishment. The severity of the penalty is proportional to the gravity of the offense. The duration of the penalty for an error is indeterminate, being subordinate to the repentance of the culprit and his return to goodness. 
the penalty lasts as long as the evil. It will be perpetual if the persistence in doing evil is also perpetual. It is of short duration if repentance comes quickly. From the moment the culprit cries for mercy, God listens and sends hope. But the simple fact of remorse for the evil done is not enough. It is necessary that reparation be made. This, then, is why the guilty party is submitted to new tests wherein he can, by his own will, do good in reparation for the evil that was done. In this manner, man constantly chooses his own destiny. He may shorten his anguish or prolong it indefinitely. His happiness or unhappiness depends upon his will to do good. This is the law, the immutable law, which transforms to the goodness of justice, goodness and justice of God. In this manner, the guilty and unhappy spirit can always save himself because God's law establishes the condition. Oh, I read that. Because God's law, the willpower, I'm losing my, sorry guys establishes the condition by which this becomes possible. What the spirit is lacking in most cases is the willpower, the strength, and the courage. If by... Oh, I lost my spot again. If by our prayers we can inspire this willpower, if we uphold the sufferer and encourage him, if by our counsel we give him the enlightenment he lacks, instead of asking God to annul his law, we turn ourselves into instruments for the execution of his law of love and charity in which he allows us to participate. So giving us proof of his charity. See heaven and hell first part chapters four, seven, and eight. And I will quit there. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> any questions or comments so far uh, on this part? No. What did you guys understand about the prayers? Uh, um, intelligible play, prayers? Um, I understood that just the mere act of repeating a prayer, a prayer 20 times does not make the sin that was committed or whatever is asking does not change that. Mm -hmm. It has to be from the heart. It has to be sincere. Mm -hmm. That's what I got out of it. Yeah. Any other comments? It talks about intention, about how, let's say, if you have done something wrong, well, uh, it, it will have an impact if your intention is to repent yourself, to work towards being a better person that time served is not necessarily reflecting on how much somebody has grown or evolved from, a, from given mistakes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, we see like, for example, the Catholic church years ago used to do the whole service in Latin, right? Don't know if you guys know or remember. Um, and uh, most people didn't know Latin and they would just repeat, they would listen what the father would say or repeat the prayers in Latin. They would not, they would not understand anything, most, at least most of what they would say. So, and also there's, there's some other traditions. I, I have visited one time, uh, one group, uh, one Buddhist group, because there's different fac uh, uh, sectors of buddhism right there's different traditions in buddhism and so i was learning about buddhism and i visited different ones different groups and there's the most traditional ones would uh, repeat mantras in japanese or sanskrit right they they uh they would do in sanskrit and most of us don't know sanskrit and they just repeat the words without understanding um and uh it is interesting because uh, a lot of people felt the difference but again like darcy said i think it was much more on the intentions that they were doing that like the commitment with their own change and what they're wanting to achieve 
that they found the results more than the prayer itself, the mantra, because in terms of uh, God or the Spirit's understanding or responding to it, it's, it's not going to happen because it doesn't come from our heart. So we are not saying anything. We are saying much more with our intentions or what our desires and what we want to achieve or uh, even without words, we can say a lot um, than doing uh, repeating words that we don't understand. Um, and so that's uh, that's what these these spirits are clarifying for us, uh, and also like uh, people sometimes get self conscious about praying because oh I don't know how to say beautiful words, or like I don't know uh, you know what what is the format of a prayer how they know how to pray, uh, prayer doesn't have a format or anything it's just like us talking to God right. How would you talk with your parents? How would you talk with someone that you really uh, respect and uh, for uh, looking for advice and help? And that's how, how you talk to God. So there's no formula. Everybody can pray. <clears throat> Everybody is capable of praying. Um, and there's no right or wrong ways of praying, except that if we don't say anything from the heart, um, or if we say things that we don't understand, or if we ask for something that's bad, it's harmful, right? Uh, uh, asking God to kill someone because they are bad people or something. So God's not going to answer that uh, because it's not a, a, a good thing to pray for, uh, something that is resonating with his laws. So how about the prayers? for the dead and the suffering spirits, what you guys understand and would like to comment about it. Should we pray for spirits that they, after that they die? Rather if regardless of their circumstances. Sometimes people uh, were bad here. They did good, bad things. And after they die, should we pray for them? Or a loved one who died and they were either bad or good. Um, but what is the effect of praying? Does, does that affect their journey in the in the uh, spiritual world somehow i think so i think you can help i don't know you can i heard that you can help them to cross over or grow you into the dead i don't know i'm not too sure about that uh, exactly but i heard about that i believe it helps yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i believe that too anybody else would like to comment Isn't that where we get the saying, may God have mercy on their soul? Mm -hmm. Because we're going to pray for their soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also they, they can hear, they can feel it. The same way that we feel uh, when someone is sending love, sometimes like uh, I, I pray, I, I dream with my family sometimes. We have encounters even though we are really far geographically and, and sometimes we don't have time to talk directly, we visit each other in our dreams and sometimes we think about each other and, and this happens with anyone, right? Uh, so what, when someone is dead, uh, is on the spiritual world, they also hear our prayers for them uh, to to help them. So if they are confused or if they are struggling, because it's not something that as long as soon as they go to the spiritual world, everything disappeared. It's not automatic. It depends, right? It depends. It, it, each case is different. And it doesn't matter. It's not about the, being the bad person or a, a good person. It's not about being, them going to hell or heaven. Uh, it's about 
which state of mind they were when they passed. Sometimes they pass from a, a horrible accident. So it, it, it takes time for them to process that transition. Or sometimes they pass from a, a, a disease that they were not ready for. They're not ready to die. Uh, and or they passed from a wrongdoing from somebody else. Um, and, you know, and or uh, sometimes they were in a bad shape and some we don't necessarily know but some people like they put a good face that they are happy they are okay but sometimes they are suffering right um, and when we take whatever we are here uh, whatever shape we are emotionally or spiritually we go through the other side the same way and then we change or progress or get stuck or resolve depending on our will as uh, mm -hmm. it, the help comes they're saying the help comes automatically as long as we ask here or hereafter if we are incarnated we the all we need to do is ask for help and the spirits come right away. And this is the same same thing happened for them. But sometimes when the person has just transitioned to the spiritual world, or if they have no experience um, with any kind of spirituality, doesn't doesn't have to do any anything related to religion, but any kind of spiritual uh, experience, if they never had any kind of experience, they get confused. And they, they think that what they are at that moment is forever. And if it's not a good place, if it's not, they are sad or they are feeling pain or they are suffering or any, any uh, difficulties they are facing after they passed, they, they think it's forever and they don't know that they can ask for help. And that's how our prayers also help because we can intersect, we can ask other spirits to, to look for them, to, uh, to ask them, to, to help them. And also they can hear us depending on the stage that they are mentally at that, uh, at that time. They can also hear our prayers. Uh, they can sense our prayers for them and they, they feel the love. So either way helps. Even if they are in a good place, if they are happy, if, if they are already, you know, uh, ab, um, adapted to, to the spiritual world and they, they are feeling good and they are growing and progressing, it's always good to receive love. Who doesn't, right? Even here, we are, when we are happy, we, we love to, to receive, uh, oh, I care for you, I miss you, receive a hug, right, from a loved one, from a friend. Who doesn't, right? Um, it's the same thing with the spiritual world. So it's very important that we pray for the spirits after they passed, uh, one way or the other. The, not assuming anything because we don't know anything and we don't need to know um and we are not supposed to judge it's, it's all about sharing our love regardless of them needing or, or them being in a bad shape or not uh so it's just a matter of living in love so we just have a little passage to finish this chapter so we are going to continue if anybody else don't uh, want don't have any other comments or questions david <clears throat> is the instructions from the spirits yes how to pray <clears throat> I don't know how long I can do this, but I'll try. Okay. 22. The first duty of all human beings, the first act that should mark the return to activity each day is prayer. <laughs> Most people pray, but only a very only a very few really know how to pray. Of what importance to God are sentences that are mechanically linked together from a habit, habit 
a duty to perform that weighs as heavily as any other duty. The prayers of a Christian, of a spiritist, or whatever cult must be made as soon as the spirit returns to the physical body. They should, <coughs> they should be raised up to the feet of the divine majesty with humil humility and prof profundity in an impulsive and an impulse of gratitude for all the many benefits received until that day for the night just passed during which, is, which it was permitted, although without knowing to get close to friends and guides so as to be able to absorb new strength and, and more perseverance through with this contact. You should lift yourself up humbly to the feet of the Lord to offer up your weaknesses, plead for help, indulgence, and mercy. This prayer should be profound because it is your soul that should rise, raise itself up to the creator in it, and in doing so, it should become transfigured as was Jesus on the mount when he showed the radiant splendor of his hope and love. <clears throat> your, your prayer should include a request for his blessings upon those things you need, but let it be for those, let it be for things you really need. Therefore, it is useless to ask the Lord to shorten your tests and trials or to give you happiness and riches. Preferably, ask for more precise items such as patience, resignation, and faith. Do not say, as many do, it is not worthy, it is not worth praying because God does not answer my prayers. In most cases, what you do, what do you ask him for? Have you ever remembered to ask him to help you with your own moral betterment? betterment? Oh no, seldom have you done this. What you must remember <coughs> what you must remember to ask for is success in all your earthly projects. And when you complain that God does not bother about anyone and that if he did, there were there would be no she's there would not be so many injustices. How foolish, how ungrateful. If you search deep into your conscience, you will you would almost always find the motive for your suffering. So then before all, all else, ask that you may become a better person, and you will see that you are showered with consolations and blessings. See chapter five, item four. <clears throat> you should pray constantly without any need to seek your chapel or fall on your knees in public. Daily prayer is a fulfillment of your duty without any expectation, exception of any kind whatsoever. It is not an act of love. Is it not an act of love towards God when you help your brothers and sisters in any moral and physical need? It is an act of gratitude to lift up your thoughts to him when something happy occurs, when you avoid an accident, or even when some <clears throat> simple triviality grazes your soul. So do not forget to say, blessed my father in heaven. It is not an act of con contrition to humble yourself. Is it not an act of contrition to humble yourself? Humble, humble yourself before the supreme judge when you see yourself weakening, even though it is only by means of a fleeting thought, so as to say, forgive me, Father, <clears throat> for I have sinned from pride, selfishness, or lack of charity. Give me the strength not to fail again and courage to make reparations for my faults. This is quite, this is, this is quite apart from regular morning and evening prayer and those for sacred days. As you see, prayer can be for all moments without interrupting your activities. On the contrary, in this manner, it sanctifies them. You can be sure that just one of these thoughts, if sent from the heart, is listened to, 
be listened to by your celestial father, even more so than those long repetitious prayers said out of habit and I was, I was without any determined motive, motive behind them, only because the habitual hour is calling me mechanically. V. Monad, Bordeaux, 1862. <clears throat> Happiness, chapter 27. Is this right? Happiness can be found through prayer. Okay, just a second, David. Uh, thank you very much. Um, any questions or comments about this uh, part, uh, spirit's teachings, how to pray, and the prayer, uh, the joy of prayer? What did you understand? And um, comments or questions? Well, now I know how to pray. <laughs> and how is it? You pray from the heart, not that that whole thing of repetitions, and um, it's more it's more thought, and it doesn't go down deep enough. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he, I think another another thing that people tend to get angry with spirit, God, whatever, is that they 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 ask for specific, very mundane things or like material or success or whatever when deep down the only thing we should quote unquote be allowed to pray for has to should not be tainted by sin in a, in some way like should not be it should be solely from the heart from love from from wishing well and wanting to overcome our difficulties in the gracious way most gracious way possible. Absolutely. And it's not that we, that God ignores the details of our lives, right? Of course, God knows that we need money to pay bills, that we don't eventually don't have a house to live, that we are suffering diseases or we need a new job or we are unhappy on our job or we don't have a job. Uh, the God knows that all those things and it, there's, there's nothing wrong necessarily on asking for, uh, let's say mundane things, right? But uh, what they are saying is that our understanding of it, what is really important, right? What is really important is like, okay, when I'm going through a trial, I need to understand that, okay, why I'm going through this, right? More than just asking for relief, we need to understand why, I'm, why we are going through those problems because the, everything we go through is either a consequence of what we have done, something, you know, if we, you know, uh, take too much medication without medical prescription, we are going to get sick, we are going to get addicted, or if we eat wrongly, we have a bad diet, if we have bad habits, we are going to get sick. Uh, but there's also consequence, uh, uh, reasons that is not necessarily a direct uh, consequence of something we have done here and now. Uh, is a consequence of our process of evolution, right? So when you go through trials, it's an opportunity for us to grow, for us to develop ourselves, to develop compassion towards others. If we don't pass through difficulties, we don't understand the other people that are also suffering, um, or we don't develop compassion towards others. If we don't uh, go through the difficulties, like we don't really put and improve what we learned, because let's say we learn about this whole thing about love, living in love and compassion, right? Loving each other, loving our neighbors. If we never had a bad neighbor, it's so easy, right? It's very easy. <laughs> So sometimes God puts us across a bad neighbor or someone that do us wrong and do some injustice to us to put and prove, okay, let's say, let's see if we really learn. Let's, let's put you on this exam. 
on this subject uh, to see if you really learn what that means. So then that then we have an opportunity to really consolidate that learning, that spiritual learning that we have acquired. And then we, we are able to see, to step outside and see, okay, uh, is really hurtful what I'm go going through right now. That person, I, I always treat them well, or I don't know them at all. They had no reason to treat me badly or to do this to me, but I know what I am supposed to do. I'm supposed to love them. So, and then we do, we do love them. Doesn't mean that we are going to uh, not defend ourselves, not to like, you know, uh, do the things that we need to, to do to preserve our, our physical existence, but we need to love them, period. Right, love our enemies, uh, love people that do wrong to us. So, all those uh, the things we go through. This is just an example, right? Of uh, but if we go to to the other side and 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 don't have this bigger picture understanding, we can you know get mad with God or mad with life. It's like, oh, why I'm going through this? This is not fair. I'm such a good person and blah, blah, blah. Why I'm going through all those difficulties? This is not, you know, uh, and, and we just ask for the relief, but we don't understand the precious lesson that this can bring to our lives. And that's the most valuable thing. It's what we learn here, the growth that we acquired in every incarnation. And that's the most important treasures that we can take and that the things we learn intellectually, the, the emotional growth and the spiritual growth are three things to tripods of this, the spiritual development. And those, those are the things we need to, we are supposed to develop in order to be superior spirits. So when we have this in mind, everything that we go through, we, are able to understand in a bigger picture in a perspective of okay what can i learn from this negative experience and then naturally our prayers are going to be different because we have this better understanding it's not that we are not going to ask god to to help us to make more money if we need uh, to help us to have a more comfortable life if we if we need because so, sometimes having a more comfortable life gives us the room emotionally and spiritually to help others better. So material comfort is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, uh, it's just about how we use them and how we uh, understand the utility of it. If we get attached to here now, and then it's frivolous. But if we understand that this can be a uh, a way, a uh, condition for us to serve the spirits in a deeper way or to serve more of our neighbors in a more broad way is, is a blessing, right? So, uh, and that's what they are trying to, to uh, understand here or to explain here. So very good. We have um, 15 minutes. Uh, we can start to do this initial um, part of this chapter 28. Tw uh, yeah, 28. Uh, I don't know if David would like to continue or somebody else. I can alleviate him. Thank <laughs> you <laughs> uh, for helping. Aren't we at prayer as a source of happiness? 23? Oh, we're yeah. Not, we're not finished. Yeah. Okay, so I'll finish up and we'll see after that. Thank you. Thank you. 23. Uh, just give me a quick second. Tried to enlarge it and it didn't work. Come hither how who wish to believe. The celestial spirits are come to announce great things. My children, God is opening up his treasures so as to distribute them for your benefit. Oh, incredible man, if only you knew what a great benefit to our arts and fate is fate and how it induces the soul to repentance and prayer. Prayer. Ha! 
How touching are the words which fall from the lips of one who prays. Prayer is the divine dew which lessens the excessive heat of our passions. Favorite daughter of fate, it leads us along the pathway which takes us to God. Moments of reclusion and solitude, you will find yourselves together with the Lord. For you, the mysteries disappear because he reveals them to you. Foster souls of thought, life is meant for you. <clears throat> Your soul liberates itself from matter and launches itself into the infinite and etheric worlds which poor humanity does not know. March forward. March forward along the path in prayer and you will hear the voices of the angels. What harmony? No longer the confused noises and strident sounds of the earth, but the sound of the lyres and the archangels, the soft and gentle voices from the seraphim, which are most delicate than the morning breeze when it plays among the foliage of the woodlands. Amongst what delights you will walk. Your earthly language cannot express such bliss. So quickly does it enter into all your pores. So alive and refreshing is the spring from which, through prayer, you are able to drink. Sweet voices and heady perfumes are what the soul hears and breathes when you launch yourself into prayer, into those unknown and inhabited spheres. All aspirations are divine when liberated from carnal desires. You too can pray, as did Jesus while walking his, while taking his cross from Golgotha to Calvary. So take up your burden, and you will feed sweet, feel sweet emotions which will pass through your soul, even though you bear the weight of some infamous cross. He was going to die, but only in order to live the celestial life in the house of his father. St. Augustine, Paris, 1861. Comments or questions? Well, I have a uh, comment. <laughs> well, it's to do with prayer, I guess if it's okay. I uh, just have a prayer request for I'm um, having some a procedure tomorrow. I'm general anesthesia surgery, all that. Um, and and I'm trying to like think of the deeper. Like, why am I still going through this repeated thing? At the one time I had like a past life thing where I was facing cancer and all the scary anxiety. Maybe it's to face the anxiety, fear, and conquer it again. I don't know. I just really don't want to have to get through all that again. But maybe the request would be to just keep the anxieties away as I face all this. That's Which would possibly be a good outcome. <laughs> That's good. Good. It's good. You're trying to in a bigger picture why why you're going through this and what what are the things you can learn from this experience. That's beautiful. And of course, you can come with our prayers. I hope everything goes well. When when is going to be? Uh, tomorrow. Oh. Two thirty. Okay. Wow. Okay. We are going to keep, which are going to be there with you in prayers. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice that we're talking about prayers. <laughs> so I just thought I could ask. Absolutely. We all need each other's prayers, and it's very, the power of prayer is really great, much greater than we think sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's, you know, experiences like that is what we need, right? To consolidate our faith, to be closer to God, um, uh, to, you know, yeah. life in a different perspective, when we feel the power of prayer in our lives, it's something that we need, right? So it can be really transformative. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. Yeah sharing her her prayers to Rosie and a comment and Kathy as well. Oh thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I'll have a good report hopefully soon. 
Absolutely. So what do you guys understand about the joy of prayer? Why, how prayer can be joyful? I guess it kind of gets you like in the Christ consciousness or what they talk about, you know, it kind of gets you up elevated and to seeing things from a you know a higher perspective maybe. Exactly. The more we pray, the more we have this experience of communicating with God directly because prayer is that we communicate directly with our with God. The more we have this experience, the more we appreciate it. And the more we can feel the divine love and the nature of, of God uh, in our own skin, we feel the joy because God is love. God is pure love. And the love, the nature of the love of God is indescribable. We cannot put into words. We need to experience. We can say all the beautiful things, uh, but we can only understand when we experience. And the prayer is the best way to experience that, the presence of God. Because when we are in solitude or with others, sharing uh, with others a moment of prayer, and our heart is fully devoted to that intention, to really ask for somebody else uh, in need or ask for ourselves uh, in, a, in a moment of need or ask for others, for us collectively. We are going through a collective moment right now on our planet, right? Very complex and, and very complicated. So we all need to be together praying for peace, right? Because we are in the edge of a third world, two, uh, uh, third, third world war, war. It's like those two, three words are really complicated for me to say, <laughs> for a, comp a Portuguese speaker to say, but you understood what I'm trying to say, right? So we are in a, in a moment of very delicate international conflict, and we need to pray. But because only through the power of prayer, we can achieve the best outcome, whatever they are. Sometimes, who knows, maybe we need to go through the, the war. Uh, but our intention is always peace because what war brings? Dead, right? A lot of people die suffering and, and misery and um, a lot of different kinds of pain. Uh, so it's never a good thing. It's not never something that we, we ever wish for. Uh, but uh, we also need to understand that the same way that happens with our own lives individually, if I needed to go through, I, we ask for health, we, uh, we do everything to, to be healthy, but if by any chance we go through any kind of disease, uh, we know that we can learn from it. Uh, so we should uh, ask for peace and pray for peace, uh, but whatever the outcome, we need to understand that eventually will be the best, uh, and we, we need to, uh, uh, you know, do the best we can with it and learn and grow individually and collectively and help each other and, um, you know, in order for us to grow as humanity. And our planet depends on it. There's so much going on despite of those uh, political conflicts. There's so much destruction that was going on already uh, for the longest time. This destruction of the nature, destruction of our moral values, uh, because you know money is more valuable than lives nowadays, right? Uh, racism, discrimination, uh, exploitation. This is going on forever, and this is destructive to our planet. So uh, we need to uh, pray for uh, our our 
planet and our race, our humanity to evolve through those experiences. Um, so, and uh, the joy of prayer is, uh, is through this, this experience of communing, communing with God and uh, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, so the more we do and the more we share with others and others join, the more we evolve because it's a, we can have insights, we can uh, you know, naturally uh, help us in our spiritual growth more than anything else. Um, so the power of prayer is immense and is unlimited and goes in many directions. So it's, uh, it's such a wonderful, those are such wonderful lessons. So, and that's, that's what consists the power, the joy of prayer. Uh, the joy of uh, experiencing the presence of God. All right, so let's uh, close our literature group for today, um, uh, do our final prayers. Uh, for those who are home watching us, uh, everybody's welcome to join us every week, uh, every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, you can just contact me through my Facebook page Revenant and I'll be glad to add you to our group and it's free of charge and uh, everybody's welcome. So let's do our final prayer. Dear God, thank you for this opportunity to be here together. Again, thank you for the lives of everyone in here. Uh, help us to put in practice uh, the lessons we have learned uh, today and every week. Help us to be uh, leading a life of love and compassion. Help us to help each other, to love each other, to pray for each other. And we ask in this moment that you uh, please bless Elizabeth in her procedure tomorrow. Uh, please uh, guide the hands of her doctors, her nurses, uh, everybody that's going to be involved in that procedure. Prepare them from now, uh, prepare them already, uh, and prepare Elizabeth as well to um, uh, face the, uh, the, the procedure with uh, the best way possible. Help her to understand uh, the things that she can learn from it and help us to continue to be at her support, her emotional support. Um, we ask also uh, your help uh, through to our planet, to our humanity right now, that as we are going through this difficult, delicate, delicate moments, moments of uh, conflicts and problems, uh, we ask your help and your wisdom to touch the hearts of the ones who are uh, leading the, the political leaders everywhere in the world, uh, the ones who have economic power, uh, the ones who are scientists, the ones who are the teachers, and, uh, and also we ask uh, your help and protection to those who are already facing the pain of losing loved ones or losing, losing their own lives. Please stay with them, giving them comfort and protection. We ask that uh, if, if it's your will, that we can overcome this problem sooner than later without any major outcome, any major war, uh, that we can learn and we can evolve as humanity and to live um, uh, help, respecting each other as people and as nations. Uh, that we can learn how to um, honor our differences and put love and compassion above personal interests and ambition. Help us to um, reconcile with uh, nature as well, that we can um, respect uh, each other in the same way that we respect uh, nature and the animals and plants because we all depend on each other. Everybody and everything in this planet depend on each other. Thank you very much for your unconditional love and your protection. Uh, continue with us throughout the week and bring us back next Monday.
Thank you very much, Amin. All right, so uh, for those who are only here for our uh, literature group, thank you for coming and I'll see you all next Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And I, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Bye.